Hello and welcome. This is the part two, technically, of our prediction series for this uh, for the season with Ajax. Unfortunately, with Ajax missing today and in the next video as well, I'll have to solo this through alone. Uh, but that's fine. We'll get through it. I'll try to talk about as many things as I can remember, obviously, about the race, as this is the reaction to the 2024 F1 Bahrain Grand Prix, and I'll, I'll go through our predictions as well, give them the points, and then, uh, well, like, I'll record the predictions for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix right after this one, so both videos should come out today, uh, hopefully, yeah. Okay, let's start with the Bahrain Grand Prix, obviously the best race of the season uh, so far, obviously. Uh, absolute banger, uh, I mean, we had a fight for the lead for like like 57 laps straight like so many overtakes so many dnf so many red flag safety cars absolute chaotic race right uh yeah unfortunately this race was the definition of uh the well i, I don't know how to say it. it's just the, the 2019 french grand prix of this season already and it's been only one race I I don't tend to quit during the races, but this was literally so boring that I I, I kind of left mid through mid through it to to play in a tournament. So I didn't finish the race. I didn't finish watching it because it was it was that boring that I didn't really didn't really I wasn't interesting just to watch just how it ends because I knew how it would end uh, basically ever since lap one as we as we saw obviously. Yeah, um, not really much to say. There are a, a few talking points that I'll go over through in the, in the Grand Prix itself. Qualifying itself wasn't too interesting, apart from a couple of things. Um, speaking of qualifying, we obviously have Max Verstappen on pole position, which, by the way, wasn't the fastest lap of the qualifying session, which, uh, I mean, everyone knows by this point that Charles Leclerc set the faster lap time in Q2, making that the fastest lap time of qualifying, but in Q3, Leclerc or any other driver couldn't couldn't match Max in his in his pole lap. Uh, probably a missed opportunity from Ferrari there, as starting from pole position would have been much better than to trying to overtake Max in 31, which is which is just not happening. I mean Max is Max is brilliant at race starts and is just not losing lead into turn one unless it's like a very rare, rare occasion or something like that uh p2 in reality was charles leclerc actually market is green right away uh so i don't forget actually this is two i guess this is, this is all right yeah so so far i'm leading in the points over ajax i actually make these numbers a little bigger yeah that, that should be fine no BS. Uh, okay. Now, uh, sorry for this. I haven't switched the. Okay. Now, now you can see the predictions. I'm sorry for that. Um, I just came from work and I'm kind of tired. Anyway, let's let's get back into it. B two Charles Leclerc, as said earlier, he set the la fastest lap time in qualifying, but unfortunately for him, he couldn't manage to replicate the lap time or drive as fast enough in. Q3, uh, but still, P2 for Charles is, is good, and luckily it, it brings me a point as well. <laughs> uh, Ajax gets zero points for this one, so it's 2 to 1 as of this moment. P3 in uh, reality was, I believe, George Russell. I don't think anyone expected the Mercedes to be up there in the qualifying trim. So we, we knew from testing and from practice that Mercedes was quick. Uh, in terms of the race pace, but on the, on one lap pace, they they lacked a bit behind the other teams. And yeah, George Russell, George Russell with an amazing lap, amazing performance throughout the entire qualifying uh, to be in P3, while his teammate qualified like P8 or P9. So very good performance from Russell there. Uh, we well had Ferrari drivers there, but none of them qualified there. Actually, make it the red. Um, I had Carol in P3, he actually qualified P4, so I was, I was closer in this case, but no points for me. P4 is Carl Sainz, so no points for us here either. 
And P5 is Checo Perez, so no points here. I was actually one off in both of these. I just didn't have a Russell in there. I mean, if I would put Russell in P3 and move those down, I would get like five points. But unfortunately, I didn't. So only two points from this one. Uh, I had Alonso there, which wasn't that far off. Alonso got like P6 and wasn't wasn't far off, che far off Checo and P5 Lewis Hamilton. I mean, uh, Lewis shouldn't be up there, honestly speaking, when Russell was P3. Hamilton should have been at least top five. Uh, well, unfortunately, Hamilton didn't have his day that you know, on Saturday. Uh, on, uh, on, oh, sorry, it was Friday on Saturday either. But whatever. Um, notable things from qualifying. Both Alpines out in Q1 and P19 and P20. Um, yeah, I've kind of expected Alpine to be very slow, but I don't think anyone expected them to be like straight up slowest team and <laughs> look out know, the last row of the grid. I mean, I should have laughed, but I, I was I was a fan of this team whenever they were back. Uh, back when they were red, red sorry, they were red all uh, the yellow cars with. Uh, with Hulkenberg and Ricardo, I was I was a fan of Renault back then. Then they switched to Alpine, which I mean was still a decent midfield car and had a pretty good livery up until this year, where they have no good livery, no good team, no good car, and the only good thing about that team is probably the drivers. Uh, yeah, the Alpine looks very bad at, at this moment. Um, well, see, yeah, Sargent was like right on Albon's pace throughout like the entire weekend, pretty much, up until when it mattered in Q one. Yeah, uh, Albon could set a lap, as a lap time, uh, jump to like top ten almost, I think. And Sargent, unfortunately, couldn't improve on his lap time, so it looks like he got off qualified on pace by four tenths of a second. By Alvin, but I think I think Logan had it in, in himself. He just couldn't couldn't get a lap in. Unfortunately, the the white wash continues as Alvin makes it like twenty four zero in qualifying now to Sergeant. So yeah, you know, hopefully we can see some improvement in Jeddah, where uh, as we mentioned earlier in some past streams, Sergeant was actually quicker than Alvin in qualifying in, uh, last year in Saudi Arabia. But his lap time got got deleted for a very stupid reason, and ever since that, Sergeant kind of dropped in pace and, and in confidence. So that was unfortunate. Um, apart from that, uh, double has Q two uh, promotion, so none of none of the Hasses, which everyone thought is going to get straight up P ten in the constructors, they actually both got into Q two, and one of them got into Q three. Obviously, Nico Hulkenberg. Making my day on Friday as my favorite driver got into Q3 with a Haas, with a supposedly the slowest car in the grid. Obviously, I don't think it has the slowest car in the grid right now. Uh, in my opinion, it's a uh, maybe, maybe even six fastest car depends on how you look at it. Uh, obviously, it's debatable right now. After one race, we can really see the clear picture. Uh, but yeah, Haas looks very impressive compared to what they were supposed to look like. They, they were they were expected to be last, and and yeah, I mean, Hulkenberg in Q Q three, uh, P six and in Q two, and unfortunately they didn't have any fresh tires uh, to set a lap time on in Q three, which I mean, his Q two lap time was pretty close to Hamilton's Q three lap time. So maybe if Hulkenberg had some pace into the car still. Because uh, you normally see improvement from Q2 to Q3. Uh, if you, obviously, if you're not Charles Leclerc, uh, so yeah, maybe Hulkenberg had more pace in that car to Q3, but unfortunately didn't have any fresh tires and qualified only P10. But still, amazing result for the Haas team, in my opinion, as they they struggled last year, especially in the races. So in qualifying, I mean, we we are used to see Hulkenberg in, uh, in Q3 from time to time. But this time, the has looked very good in the race as well. Um, yeah, um, I don't think there's any, anything much else to say. Stroll got our qualified by, by Alonso by like half a second and got out in Q2, which is uh, unfortunate for Aston, which I expected, uh, I personally expected them to be faster than they were in Bahrain, but uh, 
things happen. Fortunately for Aston, they don't seem to have as good of a car as last year at this time. Um, yeah, McLaren's and Mercedes pretty much in that territory behind Ferraris and Red Bulls. It's it's pretty much what I expected it from the first day of testing. Like Red Bull in the in front, like no competition there. Then it's Ferrari in like between Red Bull and the group behind them, which is Mercedes and McLaren. I expected Aston Martin to be in that group as well, but it seems like Aston is a bit behind McLaren and Mercedes, uh, at least like from the team's perspective, because Alonso obviously could be at their level. It's just that they only have one driver uh, bringing home the, the, the results, essentially. Um, yeah, pretty much went over everything. There's a qualifying, and I think anything else there to mention. Uh, maybe apart from the, I mentioned the Haas, uh, Hockenberg okay, qualifying Magnussen by like a huge margin, like six tenths of a second, even more, probably. Just a crazy amount, and another heroic from Hockenberg in qualifying, as that's what I like to see <laughs> from my favorite driver, obviously. Uh, to the Grand Prix. Now, uh, obviously, no one expected anyone else to win other than Max, but I don't think everyone expected him to win as dominantly as he did, uh, pretty much 2023 part two. It just uh, like it never, never ended. <laughs> we just, we just came back to Bahrain. It's pretty much the same pecking order as, as we, as we quit in, in 2023, apart from obviously the midfield changing a bit. Um, yeah, Max winning dominantly, getting a grand slam. No, no mistakes from Max, just the perfect weekend. Uh, and I you don't know, even think Bull was as dominant as last year compared to the rest of the field. So even more impressive for Max to get a grand slam in these conditions, considering he wasn't the fastest driver in qualifying either. So yeah, a very good uh, weekend for Max as it gets uh, both of us a point. Charles in P2 for both of us as well. Um, maybe it could have been if if he didn't have the brake issues, you, you never know. Uh, it's very unfortunate for Ferrari to have issues on race day after they had pretty much no problems in three days of testing, free practice session, qualifying, and, and when it, then they get to the race itself, they have issues. And it's just uh, the average Charles Leclerc weekend, honestly. Uh, um, yeah, P2 in reality was Jacob Perez. I excited him to, the, to be on the podium. And I was correct, just not in the correct place. Uh, P2, no points for us. And P3, as well as that was, in reality, Carl Sainz, who was the, uh, the lead Ferrari in this race, thanks to Charles' uh, technical issues. Apparently, Carl's had some brake issues as well, but could manage them much better. They probably weren't as severe as, uh, as Charles had. And, and yeah, Carl's drove an amazing race. And was decent all weekend uh, and testing as well. Looks uh, comfortable in the car. Uh, looks happy to race in, uh, race in it, and happy to overtake and tack in it, as he said himself. Uh, Charles less less confident, especially with those brake issues, unfortunately, but still could manage a P4. Uh, so no points there for us as well. Uh, P5 was. Uh, George Russell, I think. Yeah, George Russell was B5. Yeah. So, no, no points here as well. We both had science there. So, we, be we believed in science being in top five, just not on the podium. Because yeah, we would normally expect Charles to be the lead driver in Ferrari. But Carlos drove an amazing race. And uh, fortunately for him, he was the Ferrari on the podium. So, good for, good for science. The fastest lap was Max as well. So AJ is giving me the free point here, kind of. <laughs> Guess, <laughs> yeah, Grand Slam. That was that was pretty easy, honestly. Uh, him going to into Lewis. Uh, I mean, when you, when you look at the fastest laps of every single driver throughout the race, Max had like a lead over like one point five seconds, and uh, the closest driver was like Charles, who <laughs> who had issues. So yeah, I don't think Mercedes was anywhere anywhere near sitting in the fastest lap of the race, even. Maybe maybe on like fresh tires, but Hamilton was never in that position really. Uh, as then he overtook overtook Piastri for, I believe, was P seven. So maybe Piastri had that 
window. Uh, as as I said, uh, I don't remember the. I can't remember the end of the race because I didn't watch it personally. Uh, I just know from what I've seen on social media and such. So I don't know if uh, if, if Oscar had some kind of a window to pit for fresh tires over over the Aston Martins, but I assume not. So no for no fastest lap. Uh, attempts by the other drivers so max just was the fastest driver on track and got the fastest lap so point for me I, i'll take that uh that makes it four to two for me so far uh getting to the least impressive team actually i'll run for, for the race as well um the next finishing drivers after russell in p5 is norris p6 hamilton p7 Oscar Piastri P8, Alonso P9, and Stroll P10. So Stroll could manage a point finish from uh, P20 after lap one, which was very impressive. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my driver, whoever, my favorite driver, Hulkenberg, is very good in qualifying, but uh, his his decision making in the race is sometimes very questionable, and he just he just destroyed uh, Lance's race at that point. But fortunately for Lance and the Aston Martin team, he could manage that one point for p10 as my driver only manage a p16 i believe which is not good uh yeah uh from the race uh, nothing much to say gwen and joe managed a very good race p11 uh but Voltas had that pit stop which was like 55 seconds i think so yeah he was pretty one man show in that, that sauber team uh there, they only had one car up in the front pretty much uh, there's the racing wolves cars, obviously Magnuson P12, who drove a good race, but I still think Hulkenberg would have finished above him if he had not just drove into Stroll in lap one. But that's just what Hulkenberg does sometimes. And I had to, I had to accept it as uh, as a fan of Hulkenberg. I I have to accept his highs and his lows as well. I'm gonna keep being a fan, even you know, if even if he would just draw, drive into a wall five weekends in a row. Um, yeah. Apart from that, later on, I don't think there's anything exciting. Williams is finished low. I can expect him more from Williams, but... But, yeah. Um, getting to the least impressive team, I think this is pretty much like the easiest points in our lives for me and AJX, the Alpine team. Horrible, horrible pace for an entire weekend. And just... just I mean... Uh, I can't say anything positive uh, about that team. Even the drivers, I, I couldn't say like, yeah, those those drivers try their best with their car. I I, mean, I, I didn't even see them for other race, apart from like Ricardo or taking one of them like Ocon, and that, that took like half a lot anyway. So yeah, it wasn't much much to say for Alpine. They just they just are extremely not impressive. I I, I don't know. We didn't, ex- we didn't expect them to be impressive. They, we picked them for least impressive because we thought they would be bad, but no one expected them to be this bad. And that's what makes them the least impressive team because you can't really give it to any other team. Maybe, maybe apart from Williams, but who expected Williams to be po- scoring points anyway, right? Um, so yeah, Alpine takes it for this weekend. Least impressive driver... Uh, Ajax picks Gasly. I mean, a fair pick. Got lasting qualifying and what it was, I think, like P18 in the race because P19 was Bottas and P20 for Sargent. So P18, I think, were, was Gasly. So, so he be, beaten by his teammate in both, both race and qualifying, but not like he could have done much in that car. I can't really say much about Gasly's weekend because. The gap to Ocon wasn't big, and yeah, I can I can I can say he like m- like made me think that he had a bad weekend. It's just that Alpine team had a bad weekend. I can't really rate the drivers based on this weekend. Um, yeah, least impressive. I don't know who which driver they even give it to because like the, the, there are drivers like like Hamilton who qualified like. P8 or P9 and got P7, but then Mercedes wasn't too quick. And yeah, George had an incredible qualifying and in the race could have could have maybe fought for the podium if not for the cooling issues. 
But still, was that gap to Russell from Hamilton that big that Hamilton would get a least impressive driver? I don't really know. I mean, when I when I pick Hamilton for a least impressive driver, I pretty much stated this reasoning that he's going to get beaten by Russell both in qualifying and the race, which actually happened, to be fair. I still like hesitant to give it to Hamilton. Uh, when I think of anyone else, uh, who do you like give it to? Sergeant? I mean, who expected Sergeant to... <laughs> I mean, when you think of a Star- uh, Logan Sargent's race, you don't expect him to be like, yeah, fighting at the top of the midfield or near points or whatever. He drove a great like first half of the race, then had a, this this issue with the brakes and the and the and the wheel, which Alvin also had. Unfortunately for Sargent, he lost like uh, a good bunch of time in the in the runoff zone, like to turn four or whatever. So couldn't manage to come back from that P20. And like there's nothing much to say about Sargent. You haven't seen him throughout the entire race pretty much ever since that that break issue. Um Yeah, Magnuson, I mean he he had a really bad qualifying, but a good race. Didn't crash into anyone, had uh defended really well from the from the racing balls, so nothing to say there. Uh, Bottas, I mean, screw, screwed up by his team, even though uh, he would probably be beaten by his team anyway. Uh, Piastri, I mean, Piastri was very close to Norris. Nothing to say there. Carlos and Leclerc had uh, all right races. Carlos had a good race. Uh, Charles, you couldn't really say anything. Perez, um, yeah, Perez. I, I kind of say he, he had a worse race in than the likes of Hamilton, for example. Uh, Stroll and Alonso, yeah, kind of where I would expect them. Alpine drivers, I don't I said that earlier. RB drivers or Racing Bulls or Toro Rosso, however you want to call it. Um, I expected the team to be stronger, not the drivers. I mean, when I saw the team not being as quick uh, and qualifying, I kind of expected them to be like uh around p14 p15 and that's exactly where they were they were like behind magnuson p13 and p14 in the end so yeah nothing really to say ricardo was outperformed by snow there throughout the throughout the weekend uh but not like not like i would expect ricardo to destroy Sunoda. both ajx and i had Sunoda above ricardo so we expected we expect Sunoda to beat ricardo this season um but yeah, not not to give it to Ricardo either. There's literally no one. Uh if if there was like one driver I'd give it to, I probably would give it to Hamilton. But I'm still very hesitant. Um uh, yeah, I would I would essentially give my uh, give me a point here. Gasly, I think I think AJ would argue for Gasly if he was here. But I I, I cannot say a bad thing about the Alpine drivers because that team is just absolute garbage, like <laughs> It's like has last year. Like, I can't really say uh, a driver from the the slowest car on the grid is like the least impressive unless they get like absolutely destroyed by their teammate, which Gasly didn't. Uh, he was like right behind Ocon for pretty much the entire race, or I think, and in qualifying, one position behind, like the gap was like around two tenths of a second, which is like not not too small, but like not. Not Perez to first lap and big, so nothing really we would say. So I'm, g- I'm just gonna give it to Hamilton because I, I I really don't know which other driver would I give it to honestly. And, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself a point even though I disagree with my myself for giving me the point. I just cannot think of any driver uh, who would deserve it more in this case. Most impressive team. This, in my opinion, would go to Haas. Just because everyone expected them to be the slowest car on the grid behind Alpine, but it turned out to be extremely good in qualifying, uh, at least Hulkenberg's hands, actually beating a top five team, getting into Q3, and the, and the race pace, actually, race pace was impressive for Haas. They were slowest, they were slowest pretty much in every single race last year in race pace, and this year, oh my god, it, it looked, they looked like, like upper midfield, pretty much like P6, P7. Uh, pace uh, in terms of the teams, obviously. So around the P12, P13 territory, it's exactly where Magnussen finished. And if not, not for the Hulkenberg uh, incident in lap one and turn one in the stroll, 
maybe Holkheimer could have fought Stroll for points. You never know. The Alp, the has looked very impressive uh, this weekend, and honestly, I'm very surprised for it. I'm, a, I'm not, I'm not like against it as well as I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Holkheimer fan, so I, I, I enjoy seeing Haas being quick after such a long time. So yeah, I'll give it to Haas straight, uh, straight up. Uh, Ferrari, no way. Uh, if Ferrari would have got at least pole position and fought for a double podium, maybe I would consider this, but no, no, Ferrari, everyone expected them to actually fight Red Bull, and that's not what they did. Toro, Toro Rosso or, or Racing Wolves or RB, whatever, that team was the opposite of impressive this weekend, so I'm gonna give no points for it. Here was most impressive driver, pretty much the same thing. Those drivers were like next to each other for the entire room. The entire weekend with Ricardo, but behind Sonoda, but none of them were the most impressive by any means. Extra roll prediction. Uh, I actually don't exactly know this. Uh, eight plus cars left. I get need to need to get the full race results. Uh, twenty twenty four F one Bahrain. Uh, uh, Bahrain GP results, so I can know like which drivers actually got lapped because I I don't know about this. Okay, so up to Guinness you got lapped. Okay, I believe this is this is correct for AJX, and it's it's correct for me as well as this is the first race in Formula One history, the first opening race without any DNFs. So both of us get a point for the extra bold prediction, which is kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. So one point for each of us and it's a victory for me seven to four but it's all to play for we're doing an entire season this time mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's already calculated in here i would average a seven point over per weekend which i'm probably not gonna keep as uh, yeah, last year was up and down for me in predictions twice uh ajax was leading and i overtook him and then i kind of kept the lead because he was believing in in uh, some themes, uh, so yeah. Uh, here I'm only lucky by a tiny bits, and in qualifying maybe I could have gotten more points if I just didn't, didn't like ride off Mercedes. But I, honestly, Mercedes wasn't impressive this weekend. It was just the Russell effect that Russell qualified P3. I had no idea where that lap came from. It's like two times faster than Hamilton, which, uh, by the way, Hamilton looked like the fastest driver in Mercedes the entire weekend up until like Q3, where mm -hmm. Russell just made an in impressive lap. And by, in my opinion, Russell was the, the the factor which made Mercedes look better than they did actually uh, in the race as well. Uh, Russell had to manage the cooling issue as long as well as Hamilton. Hamilton also had the broken seat. Which I believe was very must have been very uncomfortable and probably lost him in some time as well. I don't know about the technical difficulties from that, and it actually lost him lap time. But yeah, uh, that's it for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, overall, I've given the Grand Prix like two out of ten, uh, maybe even one. Honestly, uh, this was really just French GP twenty nineteen levels of boring. There was nothing happening after like half of the race. Then I just quit and I just you can you can like what was interesting about this Grand Prix was the off track things like the before the race and after the race, all the all the media, all the all the rumors, just just everything apart from the race was exciting about this weekend. And yeah, I just really hope Saudi Arabia delivers a, a bit better race at least. This 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 was just awful. Like uh, one of the worst starts of the season we've had in a while. And twenty twenty three was not a good race to Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, but yeah, at least had some fighting. It's had, it had the Alonso fight uh, for like free drivers to the podium. It was that was that was actually very good to watch uh, because we haven't seen Alonso fight for the podium in such a long time on pure pace, obviously. Um, yeah, this this race had nothing. This race had just pure boredom, and I really hope that, that changes for for Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna wrap it here. If you enjoyed this, if 
enjoy this video make sure to subscribe like the video and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward and i'll see you in the next video that's coming out today the saudi arabian grand prix predictions that's going to be with just me again <laughs> okay see ya